In this lesson, we're going to be combining polynomials and we're going to try to figure out when you combine polynomials if you get another polynomial. So we're going to start by practicing with integers and seeing if you combine integers, do you get another integer? And then we're going to move on to polynomials. So let's look at some integers. If we multiply 7 times 9, we get 63, which is an integer, because an integer is just a whole number without a fraction. If we add 7 and 9, we get an integer. Uh, if we subtract 9 from 7, we get a negative number, but it's still an integer because it's still a whole number. But if we divide 7 by 9, we get a fraction, so we get a number that's not an integer. So maybe we can uh, multiply, add, and subtract integers and get other integers, but we definitely cannot divide and always get an integer because we already found one example where we can't. So now let's try um, even numbers, okay? Let's see, I'm going to do some of these examples and I'm going to leave some of them to you. But let's see if you add two even numbers, if you'll always get an even number. So let me have define little a is an integer and little b is an integer. And let me define capital A is two times little a and capital B is two times little b. And now let me, so that means Capital A is an even number because it's two little a's. If you divide it by two, you get A, which is an integer. And the definition of an even number is a number where you, if you divide it by two, you get an integer. So um, since little a and little b are both integers, um, and if you divide A or capital A or capital B by two, you get little a or little b, then both capital A and capital B are even numbers. So what happens if you add capital A to capital B? Do you get an even number? Well, that equals 2 times little a plus 2 times little b. I'm just substituting 2, a, 2 little a for capital A and 2 little b for capital B. And I can factor out the 2 and get that it equals 2 times a plus b. And um, as long as when you add two integers together, you get another integer, then if you add capital A and capital B together, you're going to get an integer be or an even number um, because if you divide it by two, you get little a plus little b. Um, so I guess maybe we should prove that if you add two integers together, you get another integer, which I think is, um, yeah, it's number eight. So let's go back to number eight on the next page, okay? Let's go ahead and prove that if you add two integers, you always get an integer. Okay, so what is an integer? It's a whole number. Um, so let's, let's suppose you added uh, some number of whole oranges to some other number of whole oranges then you'd have a bigger number of whole oranges, but you'd only have whole oranges. You wouldn't have any half oranges. So adding whole things together only gives you more whole things. It doesn't give you any half things. So that's my reasoning for, yes, if you add two integers, you're always going to get an integer. All right. Um, and the same thing works for subtraction. If you have, you know, a, a bunch of oranges and you take a, away some of those oranges, you're still only going to have whole oranges. As, you know, if you only took away whole oranges, um, you're not going to get any half, half oranges. So subtraction, there's no way you can subtract and get a, a half an orange. Um, so subtraction also works. Let's see, is there anything else? Um, 
If you add two odd numbers, you'll always get an odd number. Let's try that one. Um, that one I would just prove by, let's try adding two odd numbers. Let's add three and five, and I get eight. And if I add, divide eight by two, then I get four, which is an integer. So eight is an even number. So I added two odd numbers, and I got an even number. Um, so you're not going to get always get an odd number um, if you add two odd numbers together. We just found an example where you, you where you don't. Um, all right. So I think using the reasoning that I've used in these examples, I think you might be able to do the rest of these. So let's go on to polynomials, and let's talk about what is a polynomial, okay? So a polynomial is going to be um, something of the form like ax to the n, I'll say n plus 1, plus bx to the n plus cx to the n minus 1, and so on. Um, so these we call coefficients, the a, the b, and the c. And for it to be a polynomial, the co coefficients have to be a number. And these are the exponents. And for it to be a polynomial, the exponents have to be a positive integer, and 0 is a positive integer. So the exponents have to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Um, so as, And then you can have as many terms as you want, as long as every term, the coefficient is a number, and the exponent is a positive integer. And I think for illustrative mathematics, we're going to assume there's only one variable. So we're going to assume it's the same variable, but, but you can have more than one variable, um, and it would still be a polynomial. But we're only going to be working with one variable, I think. All right. So let's um, let's see if you multiply two polynomials if you're going to get a polynomial. Let's just try an example. So I, I, the way the way they want you to do this is they want you to try adding polynomials together and see if you get a polynomial and try subtracting and see if you get a polynomial and try multiplying and see if you get a polynomial and just do a bunch of examples and also try dividing um, and see if you ever get anything that's not a polynomial. So like one of the, with the integers, we were able to find an example where if you did 7 divided by 9, you didn't get an integer, so that proved it wasn't true. So if you can find an example where you add or subtract or multiply or divide polynomials and you don't get another polynomial, then you know that you, you won't always get one. Um, so I'd, and I want to keep the video short, so I'm not going to work out any examples, um, but on your own, See if you can find any examples where you don't get a polynomial, and um, we will talk about it in class.